Hi, this is Matt Schaffner of the Casper Association, driving the decentralized economy forward for the Casper ecosystem. You're cruising the airwaves at the edge of NFT, the number one spot on the Web3 decentralized highway for good intel and great vibes. Keep listening. Hey, Web3 Curious listeners, stay tuned for today's episode to learn what essential infrastructure and developer-facing content Casper's been cooking up that is now ready for the world to enjoy. And how digital ownership and the term NFT are set to change in 2024 and what that means for Web3. And finally, why meaningful relationships and authenticity supercharge our guest today. It's going to be a great show, so sit back while we cue the intro. Welcome to the Edge of NFT, the podcast that brings you the top 1% of Web3 today and what will stand the test of time. We explore the nuts and bolts of the business side and also the human element of how Web3 is changing the way we interact with the things we love. This podcast is for the dreamers, disruptors, and doers who are pumped about this ecosystem and driving where it goes next. Welcome back to our special new reoccurring segment, Edge of Casper. We're catching up with the team at Casper every month. We're staying on the pulse of this rapidly expanding ecosystem, bringing you exclusive updates and insights straight from the heart of the action. This regular segment is sponsored by our friends at Casper. Be sure to check out the killer whales with Anthony Scarmucci, plus our friends, Elijah Producer, Gracie Chen, Wendy O, and Arnold Brothers from Altcoin Daily during Q1 of 2024. They've been on both the show and at Outer Edge, so we hope you're as excited as we are. You can check out our Twitter feed to watch a show teaser. Today, we'll focus on some exciting updates around Casper Association with our guest, Matt Schaffnett. Matt is the Chief Financial and Operating Officer at the Casper Association with over 20 years of cross-industry experience, including Deloitte & Touche and Andalay Capital. He champions decentralized economies and blockchain innovation to inspire positive change within the Casper community and lectures on topics of digital business development ecosystems at the University of Applied Sciences and Arts in Northwestern Switzerland. For those who don't already know, the Casper Association is a nonprofit entity based in Switzerland, dedicated to overseeing Casper Network's development and ensuring its ongoing growth and decentralization. Comprised of an independent validators running nodes on the network, the association fosters organic growth. Let's get started. Hey, Matt, welcome to the show. Hey, Josh. Hi, Richard. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Are you in... Are you in Switzerland now? Where are you in the world? I am. I'm located and based in Zurich, Switzerland, and is where I'm calling you from my cozy apartment office. Uh, it's evening here. How about you? Nice. It's um. Oh, it's beautiful over there. We were we were there with you guys at Davos one year, and you know my girlfriend has a very short list of places she would consider living uh, around the world other than LA, and Zurich is on that list. You guys got great food. You know the air is so clean. Um, lots of lots of outdoors op- op- opportunities. It's, it's beautiful over there. I hope you're enjoying it. Yeah, I hit the slopes yesterday, as a matter of fact. So, uh, you know, in my early 40s, it's the perfect place to be. Western Pennsylvanian, transplanted in New York City for a long time, and uh, now, uh, you know, idiot abroad in Switzerland and enjoying uh, every minute at this stage of my life and career. Nice, nice. So we've had Joe on the show and Medha, and we can't wait to unpack more of the updates on what's going on with with Casper in 2024 with you. Um, but before we do, you know, we've heard about sort of some of your background, but um, how did you get into Web3? Hey, man, that's a great question. So I've been a bystander for some time. I think... Um, my earliest curiosity was back in 2012 or 13, and I was with my partner for a dinner party with her best friend and, and husband uh, and in, in Manhattan. And <clears throat> Seth was actually mining Bitcoin in his bedroom. And I had already been aware of this. And as an accountant, I got very interested. I was at Annaly Capital Management at the time. I even went as far to create a wallet. I never used it, sadly, um, and continued to be a bystander. Uh, Maybe that's a a byproduct of my uh, profession, who knows? Um, Fast forward uh, a decade um, or a little under so, I was, um, I left corporate. You know, I started my career in audit at Deloitte in finance, moved on to doing specialty real real estate finance over at Annaly 
was loving it, but needed some more growth, did a FinTech um, and one of the investors uh, at the family and friends run, family, friends and fools run was Ralph Kubli, director at the Casper Association, who has become a, a great friend and colleague and mentor of mine. Um, and he was involved back then in 2015, 16. I, and I, I called him blockchain Kubli, you know, and, and he really got into it. He moved back to Switzerland um, and, you know, come 2021, pulled me in here at the Casper Association to help uh, scale and professionalize the open source side of the house. Uh, and it's been a pleasure to do so, actually. You know, we, we were three when I came in the summer of 2021 and we're sitting at nearly 40. So, you know, a remote organization uh, growing in bear markets, you know, that's always a, a good thing. Yeah, yeah. I think when we look at, you know, how do we get crypto to mass market blockchain, I think time is the number one answer because, you know, onboarding is a process. Um, you know, it's not easy yet to, yeah. to do all these things. And, um, you know, I will say on, on the note of of um, the, the growth of the Casper team, uh, you know, our listeners should pay attention. That's a, a lot of growth. Um, there's a lot of companies that have been downsizing over the last year and you guys are growing and building. And um, that's why we're excited to do this segment with you. Hey, thanks a lot. Yeah, really, you know, if you look at the the maturity curve going from, you know, forming, storming, norming, performing, hopefully not adjourning, but in the decentralized world, that's one of the idyllic goals of the association is to kind of fade into the background, unless it became something like the, the Linux Foundation. And I think to your point, Josh, you know, my theme coming in in 2021 was hashtag the professionals are coming, right? Because the, mar the, the crypto market had come to, in my view, a bit of a maturity point where it was going to scale more and move into uh, gen pop, so to speak. And we've been seeing that and listening to your podcast. You know, I've been hearing that from some of your guests. Yeah, it's been um, there's been no shortage of content during this, quote, bear market because um, millions of dollars of 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 capital has been invested into projects that are building the future of the web three sort of train tracks um, across every aspect from gaming to virtual worlds to enterprise use cases and, and whatnot. It's just all this development is happening. And now um, that people are ready to pay attention again to what's going on, we get to sort of show off this, um, this, this effort over the next 18 months where I think you know eyeballs are on the industry again, so it's exciting times. Absolutely, I mean, I'm excited to see what rolls out too. Oh, definitely, Matt. And like on that, you know, we've we've now had Casper on a, a, a few times on the show, and uh, and our audience is very familiar. But what part of the ecosystem are you focused on, and what has you so excited about the Casper ecosystem? You know, right now that we got the team together from a manager in an organization perspective. In terms of markets, the, the three areas that excite me the most are the areas of finance, the creator economy, um, and the area around authenticity and ownership, which kind of dovetails into like IP and uh, royalties and, and other things that are ripe for adoption and uh, efficiency improvements. I love that. Um, I think the efficiency improvements are going to be very important, especially as things continue to to scale out within the ecosystem of making sure that we have more scalability. I think we're going to see this new rush of people that are coming to interact within all of blockchain. But as builders are starting to come, and as you, as you said, you're trying to be the professional in the room, people are looking for infrastructure to really bring it to that next level. Um, and, and, and Casper has been grinding through this, uh, the bear cycle, building a really awesome blockchain ecosystem to be able to yeah. provide those types of, of, of services. Yeah, definitely, Richard. You know, I have a quote in my signature. It says, tough times don't last, tough people do, and bear markets bear fruit. And I really believe in that, and I've, I've seen it firsthand at Casper. I love that quote, Matt. Um, you know, I think it's something that everyone in the industry and, and looking at the industry should sort of reflect upon. And you guys, we've been talking about the building that you guys have been doing. Um, last year, 
you became the first layer one blockchain to enable native smart contract debugging, which is really important for businesses to find solutions to address use cases that require ungated transparency of state. I'm really curious why did Casper choose to make this a priority? Thanks for that, Josh. Yeah, for us at the Casper Association, you know, the underlying theme is things that are fit for purpose, fit for use in real life situations. And I think that transparency of state and the blockchain as a verification layer are where our appropriately our, our areas of focus are at the Casper network. And I'm excited to see some of the versions come out um, and new releases this year, including Condor. Uh, I, I, I like that not only are things starting to evolve, but you're also starting to expand different parts of the ecosystem where there's focus. And, and one of those areas that I kind of want to dive into a little bit more is the area of NFTs. So, uh, you know, a while back we had Joe Benzo on the show and he agreed with us that, you know, NFT, NFTs are here to stay, but not necessarily the term NFT. Uh, that term actually might change. Do you foresee a need to have a more nuanced naming convention that captures granular standards with both nomenclature and the technical levels? Hey, great question, uh, Richard. I definitely think that's going to happen. It's going to happen organically. The 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 labels of the NFT, the label itself of NFT will kind of fade into the background and it will be the use cases themselves, in my view, that will become more important. Like, what am I doing with this digital asset? And we'll call it that. You know, there's a lot of different tech that's similar across lots of different industries, but we call it different things based on the purpose of its use, which makes sense. So great, are, great perspective there. What are some of the real world sort of use cases that, you know, you guys have been talking about in, in Davos during your, um, your sort of conference that you're doing there? And what are some, what are some of the things happening on chain at Casper that you're excited about? Yeah, so there's a, there's a few things. So let, I think the focus has been on NFTs as addressing legal concepts of authenticity and ownership in one foul swoop, and then being able to securely transfer items of a variety of kinds in a new way, which is super exciting. Um, from a development standpoint on the network, uh, some of the big projects that I'm excited for that touch a couple of different areas. Some are in the financial risk area. There's a project called Ariadna that is working on this idea of smart, verifiable contracts in the financial world, right? They've, they're they working with this Actus standard, which standardizes um, these algorithms, right? Because math is the language of finance. And you can basically programmatically make smart tokens. Uh, I find that to be really exciting. Within the world of the creator economy, you know, we're working with lots of things. One of the things I'm most excited about is actually Joe Benzo's project, Outlaw Dogs, because of the way I see digital tribes forming around the NFT world. And I do see a, cult, a huge, by the way, cultural impact coming here. Um, and then when you go into IP, right? IP we is 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 one use case around patents, but we're also looking at music rights in the industry in the, the music industry, and we're looking about functionality in the back end of of real web three or web two games rather, with you know enhancements in the back end that make them you know more useful for the gamers themselves. So I think there's a lot of exciting stuff. Those are some of the areas I could say that we at the Casper Association are excited about. Yeah, and, and you brought up one that I really want to spend a little bit more time on. Um, you talked about how NFTs can help to elevate digital tribes. Um, how do you feel NFT communities are representing that new wave of social media in, in real life engagement? Because you can really see as people are flocking to, you know, what NFTs are and were this, this true like, emphasis around community and, and this this grit of like wanting to be around people within their tribe. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a great point. You know, we by nature as human beings are tribal. We love to be, we love to participate. It's just in our genetics, I believe at least. I mean, I'm not scientifically backing that up, but I believe that would hold water. And I think that 
NFTs and the communities that are building around them are offering a, a level of customizability around how folks within that community can engage that is quite exciting and can leverage different areas, whether you're talking about, you know, a, a, a poker community or you're talking about uh, a fitness community. I think that it's relevant across these areas and we're seeing it in real time um, in in projects across the ecosystem. Yeah, so um, I guess, um, Matt, one, one question I have for you is like, there's always this sort of interesting debate about sort of NFTs on Ethereum versus NFTs yep. on any other chain, whether it's it's Casper or, you know, Polygon or uh, Avalanche, you name it. Um, and, and there's a, a group of folks out there that are, are, are very much like bullish on, on Ethereum only. And then there's another group that's really um, getting into experimenting with these other chains, including Casper. What do you say to those folks that are like Ethereum centric in terms of the potential of NFTs and other chains? I mean, Ethereum is a great network, so I can't knock it and I wouldn't knock it. And I think that that I can understand, you know, even Bitcoin maximalists, I'm not one, but I can understand where they're coming from. Um, I think that it's a multi-chain world and that's clear, right? I think that it will be a, a handful and I don't think like all the chains that are around today will survive, unfortunately. Hopefully we're one of them. And folks will find their niches and that interoperability will express itself in kind of use cases and how that happens and unfolds. You know, we'll see what these companion NFTs and, and what happens in, in these instances, you know, you could have instances where there's a chain that specializes and has, you know, great use cases around certain types of royalties. And that's the preferred thing, but it needs to be linked to somebody else's token that doesn't happen to sit on that chain. And I think that those solutions will come to bear themselves in manifest in reality. Um, and I do think that we're probably, it's kind of like the dot com, you know, at the dot com, everyone could get financing and then they got money and then like it blew up when they realized that, you know, everything, you know, pets.com is the famous illustration. But at the end of that, did the Internet go away? No, the Internet stayed. It became like the one peep, the folks that were really adding value, you know, bearing down during that time came and, 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 and created billion dollar, multi-billion dollar companies. Uh, and we don't really talk about the internet in terms of what we're doing. We're recording this podcast with internet technology. I make WhatsApp calls and I'm not like, oh boy, I got to use my internet to call my buddy, right? It's in the background. And that's kind of one of the bases of like where I see like the direction of the, the, the NFT and broader web three space, but also where I see the direction of the like naming conventions and what we call NFTs and whether that survives as a term. I don't think it may die. Yeah, man. I like what you had to say. Cause I agree. No one's just out here talking about how uh, they go on their iPhone and they really love how this iOS makes their application just so much better or how um, Elixir is making this new program just go so much faster. It, it's, it's, it's the end game of like, how's that experience happening is, is what am I able to do being accomplished and I think as people are coming in and building and, and trying things upon the Casper ecosystem, they're going to be you know, blown away by how they're able to build with good code structure and to, to get the end results that they want. And uh, you, you also were talking about building because like, sure, you have all these projects that come out during the dot com bubble. They all don't make it. But the ones that stuck around and really got to the core of the end product and focused on making sure that that end result was quality in there were the ones that made it. And so earlier you teased up a, a couple of the different projects that are happening in your ecosystem like Ariane, um, but wanted to kind of tap into that a little bit more. So, you know, what alpha can you give us on some of the other new projects in the Casper ecosystem uh, that are coming out? And, and what are some of the other major milestones uh, for some of the existing projects that you have that are coming up? Yeah, great question. So like, um... I spend a lot of my time like on the pulse of that. I sit in the grant committee, you know, in October of 2022, we launched our 25 million Cas uh, Casper Accelerate grant program, which has been quite successful. And now we are really like looking forward to some of those projects rolling out. Um, 
what I'm most excited about is some of the functionality. You know, you can expect more swap functionality along the lines of Uniswap version three, for example. Um, where I spend a lot of my time these days is access and how people can get access to the ecosystem. So the first part of 2023, we really put a good college try into making a developer portal that made sense and was digestible by the developer community. Um, and they're putting out projects as well. So that's gotten a lot of traction. It's legible tutorials. The, the community has responded really well and it's only going to get better. It's an iterative process, but we saw that as a big um, hole in the broader ecosystem. And I actually just want to have a quick follow-up question to that. So you talked about some of the grants that you're reviewing. Um, you know, as the bear market happened, a lot of uh, grant money kind of uh, got swallowed up, but it sounds like Casper is still actively uh, putting out grants. Can you kind of just talk to that just for a moment of is if someone's listening to this right now, they're like, oh, I'm looking for a really cool ecosystem to build on. Uh, is, is Casper still, you know, providing some grants? Yeah, definitely. Look, like we're we we have our gills full with projects, but we're still looking at projects and willing to issue grants for the right for the right players. Sometimes what I'm starting to see at this stage after being a little over 12 months into the, the first kind of, let's say, iteration of like making sure you have soup to nuts ability to, you know, do your due diligence, help people out, figure stuff out. There's some redundancy in terms of what people want to build sometimes. Um, but we're definitely receptive to that. And, and you know, you can find us on the uh, Casper.network uh, website. And there's a there's a link to the ecosystem grant program where you can fill out a form and let us know. Very cool. Yeah, so so Matt, I, I, I'm I'm curious, was uh, was hosting a podcast on your bucket list, or did this just happen to uh, fall into place? <laughs> Good question, Josh. No, actually, I never thought in a million years I'd be doing a podcast. You know, my colleague Joe Benzo has a background in the area, and and man, him and and, and our guy Colin in the background does a great job post post uh, production. And uh, yeah, it's been really fun, though. I could say that. I never thought it's not usual for the CFO, COO kind of guy to be co-hosting a podcast. And, you know, it's been really fun to get to talk to a lot of people as yourselves, I'm sure, you know, and, and, and I'm learning all the time. So I guess what you're saying is most CFOs don't have your level of charisma in, to, to be on a podcast. I, I didn't say that. I just did, I just meant it's not archetypical. <laughs> but no, I do think that well, that's also a good point in terms of where the role of CFO has has shifted over the decades, right? It's become more of a, a strategic partner um, and and um, communicator than in the past. And, and that, by the way, is by virtue of computerization, right? Because, you know, we're not uh, exactly going back to the abacus these days. Yeah, you've got a little bit more time on your hands to be more strategic and and, and front front facing. That's cool. What what are some of the some of the content that you guys have done, and maybe some of the upcoming things that you guys are going to delve into on the podcast? Yeah, good question. So last year we did, I think ten or twelve interviews, and we had a few uh, mashups of some of the events we covered. Uh, Alan Mendelowitz, uh, former U.S. regulator of the banking system, who's running the Actus Foundation, uh, was a favorite. Martin Heesbrook from um, Uphold, he's the head of research. Great show. Uh, Meta also showed showed up to to give us some so, some pointers. And coming up, I'm I'm really excited about a cast that we recorded a while ago, actually, with the guy by the name of Georg Bart Bach, and Georg's a digital art advisor. And he's someone I consider kind of like a counselor and mentor in this space. And boy, he's like really doing amazing things, bringing like the established art community and to the digital world because he's in Art Basel and all these places. And, and it's like where he's been breathing. So I'm excited for that one in particular. Very cool. Yeah. So, I mean, it makes sense if folks are excited about the grant program, getting more into Casper, if uh, our monthly show isn't enough, they should check out the podcast. And where do they go for that? You can find us on casper.network. Um, and we're on most mediums that you want to listen to us, whether it's Spotify, iTunes, et cetera. 
and they're short form. So we're not cannibalizing your market share. You know, these are 10 to 15 minute casts that you can listen to on um, the bus or on the train or in your car on the bike, you know, uh, and get through uh, easy. So digestible is the idea. Very cool. Well, um, speaking of, of easy, um, hopefully, since you're a podcast pro, our next segment, Edge Quick Hitters, will be easy for you. And I know you've heard the show before, so you have a little bit of an upper hand. Let's, uh, let's roll credits. NFTLA returns as an inclusive week of community events throughout LA, celebrating the outer edge of innovation. Builders be building. There's so much energy colliding around gaming, AI, generative art, the metaverse, decentralized social, and the future of entertainment. If you want to be in the mix, including the official free NFTLA celebration, visit outeredge.live to subscribe for your updates in RSVP. Edge quick hitters are a fun and quick way to get to know you a little better. It's going to be 10 questions. We're looking for just a short, single, or few word response, but feel free to elaborate if you get the urge. You ready, Matt? As ready as I'll ever be. (laughs) What is the first thing you remember ever purchasing in your life? I, I, I'm stealing this. It didn't take it from another guest, I promise. But I, I mean, my mother used to give my sister and I money and we'd go to the store and buy. And I'm going to throw my sister under the bus because my mom always goes, you are so generous. You'd spend all the money to buy two candy bars and bring me one. And your sister would buy one and put the money in her piggy bank. Uh, and I always found it funny that she went into education and I went into finance. <laughs> there you go. So I guess your sister taught you a thing or two um, along the way. Definitely. <laughs> um, what, what is the first thing you remember ever selling in your life? Uh, the first thing I ever sold. I don't know if you guys know what the green sheets are. Do you know the green sheets? The green <laughs> sheets are like, these ad- it wasn't even the green sheets. I sold the bogus green sheets. Like they were like, they're basically like flyers that you stuff. And I must've been like 10 and I had to actually stuff these things. They would give you the paper and the plastic bags. You had to stuff them. Um, that was my first, uh, job basically. And who buys these green sheets? No one buys them. That companies buy advertising, and you just put them on every door in a neighborhood. Like people hate me. I'm the Uh-oh. one putting like you know when it says no soliciting. You know, I'm like, oh, I don't know what that means. I'm only ten. Here you go. <laughs> there you go. Plus, yeah, like day so one. another rendition of being the paper boy, but uh, a little bit more direct sales oriented, and yeah. Um, got it. <laughs> Not really cool. Um, so what is the most recent thing you purchased? Uh, I've been back to back calls all day, <clears throat> so I didn't buy anything today, but yesterday on my way back from skiing, we stopped at a store and I bought some, like, it's not very healthy, but recharge, but Red Bull and some like, I don't know, pretzels with peanut butter inside. <laughs> oh, nice. Hey, man, I'm all about Red Bull. If I'm going on a long road trip, Red Bull yeah. gives me wings and gets me to my destination. So uh, I'm never going to knock Red Bull. But on the other side of that, uh, what's the most recent thing that you've sold? Um, Bitcoin. Because uh, all right. My the, the just to put some not all my Bitcoin. I just like when you consider a, a small meager portfolio, but like the logic was I'm if I'm at 50 50 Bitcoin Ether and e and Bitcoin has the price of the ETF already in it, then an ether would be naturally next potentially, then there will be a rotation. It kind of happened, so I was happy with that. I'll recalibrate. So that was the most recent thing I sold, but not because I'm anti. Bitcoin. Let me be clear. <laughs> Good elaboration. It was a, yeah, that was a um, that was a smart call, and uh, certainly not financial advice, but but makes sense. So, Matt, uh, what is your most prized possession? Definitely not financial advice. Uh, so, thank you for clarifying, Josh. Um, most prized possession. You know, I thought I I I I. I I don't think you can count friends as your most prized possession because they're not really possessions, right? But that's the most important thing to me. I'm a relationships guy. 
outside of that, you know, as long as I have my my nice computer set up, I guess that would be. <laughs> we can, um, I can communicate you know, with the folks like yourselves. Yeah, I think friendships are so important. And, um, you know, I think in this busy world um, where we're sort of so decentralized and an in internet based, we really have to make time for friends. So I appreciate that a lot. What is, uh, so next question is, if you could buy anything in the world, digital, physical service or experiences currently for sale, what would that be? Currently for sale. Hmm. I'm a bit more of a builder, so I don't know what I would exactly buy, but I'm kind of like very much into this concept of being a digital nomad and um, have even lived in co-living spaces in addition to co-working since you know, I don't know, 2015. Um, so I think I would buy a hand, a, a network that already had like a small community around it. And I would enhance that with like, you know, NFT tokens to basically be able to check in and check out of your, 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 your places around the world, whether you're going to Bali or what have you. So I, I, I would invest in something like that, that could connect, uh, the community yeah i like that so much uh and there's so many use cases for it and i think there's a there's some different people and communities trying to do it no one has necessarily cracked the code on that just yet but you know with unlimited resources with this wish you just got i think i think you could figure it out especially being a yeah. finance guy i think, I think <laughs> um so next question for you is if you could pass on one of your personality traits to the next generation what would it be Well, I don't want to, I would say I have a authenticity, authenticity, I think I'd pass on. Um, Cause that's a, that's a hard one. You'd want to pass. I have a, a, only a couple. I have more bad traits probably, you know, that I need to fix. Uh, but that, that and curious, but I would, I would say that would be the, the one I'd pass on is being authentic because I think that being authentic leads to a lot of the other naturally positive things um, in the world. Yeah, just going back to your response earlier about how important your relationships are with your friends. One of the things that make it as great as it is, is authenticity. You can't really have those kind of relationships without it. So uh, I think that's a great answer. But uh, since you brought it up, the next question actually is, if you could eliminate one of your personality traits from the next generation, what would it be? My temper. Yeah, my temper, man, because I think that, you know, uh, sometimes it's slow to boil and then it just stays a little bit i'm kind of like one of those guys so i think that i would try to shed that one you don't get anywhere by by brooding um so i've been better over time getting in my old age or mid midlife but uh, yeah that, i would definitely give that one up well maybe the the fresh air in zurich will will, will help there um <laughs> fingers <you> crossed <laughs> so uh matt what did you do just before joining us on the podcast I read through the show notes, but before that I had calls. Um, and then I, the, the very last thing was I cracked open a ginger beer for the, for the podcast. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, is that, uh, from Zurich, like a, a local ginger beer? Uh, no, fever tree. I'm not sure where they were fever trees. I'm this Red Bull and fever tree. This is not a plug. I'm just curious. <laughs> it's fever nice. tree. I don't think it's Swiss. But it's right. very good, and I highly recommend ginger beer. It's good for the soul. One of my favorite memories from um, Switzerland actually was the vending machines there. Actually, you can you can get uh, cheese and yogurt and and salami out of the vending machine. So <laughs> I, I never, and I'm always curious what that is over there, but. Yeah, that was that was a fun moment. If you're hungry at 1 a.m. in in Switzerland, uh, go head to a vending machine for for a real food meal. It's um, true. It's true. It's true. Um, and Matt, what are you going to do next after the podcast? I know it's Monday, but at the Schaffner household, uh, I'm going to cook myself and my partner tacos. So it's Taco Monday instead of Tuesday today. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Richard, do we have a bonus question for Matt today? We do. And it is a unique one, Matt. So this one's just for you. What is your favorite NFT? And if it could talk, 
what do you think you would say about the current state of Web3 today and where it's headed for 2024? It's a good question. Um, I think I, I would have to say my out, I have an outlaw dog, full disclosure. I do have an outlaw dog. Uh, <clears throat> I have two and they're very cool. I have one as my profile picture. If you follow me on Telegram or um, other places, uh, you will see it. Uh, and I think if it could talk, it would say buckle up. I think it would say buckle up, partner, because I think we're we're going out west, you know, and the pioneers have kind of laid down the tracks. And as we move into, you know, a adopted Web3 community, you know, that that's the that, that's the settlers. And there's no shame in that. You know, that's just filling out the, the, the mortar of the bricks. So that's what I think you'd say. Buckle up, partner. I love that. That's a, that's a great quote. Um, and. I agree, man. I think 2024 is about to be insane. And I think that, you know, we have a lot of exciting things in front of us. So uh, I definitely want to appreciate it. Um, but one thing I do want to get to is uh, as we kind of go into the next phase of this is to, to be able to provide shout outs. And I believe today you have a specific shout out that you want to share with everyone. All right. I'm going to be greedy. First, I'm going to shout out my mom for bringing me into the world. Then I'm going to shout out Mr. Ralph Kubli for bringing me into the crypto. And I would like to give a special shout out that I recently found out over the short term that my good friend Reno Dubay sold his company to ABB, which is a big manufacturing company. So my my guys in robotics are also doing well. So congratulations, Reno, and the team from Seven Cents Robotics. Cheers. Awesome. Great shout outs. Um, and also today, I believe we're going to do a giveaway. Josh, you want to give a little bit more info on that? Yeah, this is really generous of the Casper crew. Um, thanks so much, Matt. So um, it looks like we're going to be giving away a total of 50,000 Casper. Um, you can sort of check on what that value equals if you go on CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko. Um, but but really generous. And um, that includes a grand prize of, of 25,000 Casper plus um, a number of uh, concession prizes for folks. And Matt, I believe we also have some outlaw dogs uh, up for uh, the community so they can be part of the crew. Is that correct? You got it. Our friend Joe Benzo has been very generous. Him and his co-founders have offered to give away three outlaw dogs to lucky winners uh, listening to the Edge of NFT podcast. And we're excited for them to join the journey out west. We've reached the utter limit at the edge of NFT for today. Thanks for exploring with us. We've got space for more adventures on the Starship, so invite your friends or recruit some cool strangers that'll make this journey all so much better. How? If you're listening, go to Spotify or iTunes right now, rate us, say something awesome. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and pass this episode on to a friend or two. Then go to edgeofnft.com to dive further down the rabbit hole Subscribe to our newsletter for all the latest shows, contests, and more Web3 updates. Look us up on all major socials who are typing at Edge of NFT with no spaces. Start a fun conversation with us online. Lastly, be sure to tune in next time for more great Web3 content. Thanks again for sharing this time with us today. The views and opinions expressed on Edge of NFT reflect solely those views and opinions of the show hosts and its guests. Please make sure to do your own research. Our show is not financial advice. You understand that you are using any and all information available on or through this podcast at your own risk. Whenever making financial decisions, we recommend doing your own research and talking to your accountant for financial advice. From time to time, we may feature sponsored content on the show for which we receive value, and we may share links for which we receive a commission if you make a purchase through one of those links. Refer to our website, www.edgeofnft.com, for our full disclaimer, terms and conditions, and privacy policy.